Well, I think there's a tension within Christianity that goes back uh, to the early days of Christianity and then is expressed more fully in the early days of the university system in the West, say in the 12th and certainly in the 13th centuries, where you, you have two strains or two traditions, if you like. There, there's one tradition which follows the writings of St. Augustine in the late 4th, early 5th century, which stresses the importance of faith and downgrades the significance of, of mere uh, knowledge or uh, the understanding of the natural world. I mean, Augustine thinks that the wisdom you get from the Bible is much more significant than the knowledge you get from uh, reading uh, or understanding nature, which he thinks is essentially a kind of pagan learning. And he, he downgrades it because it's uncertain and the, the, the pagan philosophers, um, people like Aristotle and Plato, they all disagree amongst themselves, whereas there's just one, uh, there's one Christian truth. There's another strain you get in the 13th century, particularly in the works of Thomas Aquinas, which stresses the role of reason and stresses the capacity of human beings to understand nature. You know, the, the idea there is that uh, we've been put on this world, this earth by God, with certain capacities and we have a duty to make use of them, that these capacities are adequate to the way the world is. And although Christian, the Christian establishment in the late 13th century is suspicious of this Thomist line after Thomas Aquinas, um, the, the Thomist line becomes dominant in the 14th century. That is, the understanding uh, of, that comes through pagan learning through Aristotle's texts becomes the dominant way through which to understand nature in the 14th and 15th centuries. And moreover, Aristotle becomes heavily Christianized. So he becomes, which is a paradox because he's a pagan, he becomes the official philosopher of the Christian church in the medieval period.